What's up, ninjas? Yo, check it out. I got this exclusive breaking news scoop concerning Airsoft. Here's what's going on. The premier Airsoft event in the world, Airsoft Nations Cup, is planning on bringing the competition to South Africa next year. On the phone with me is Bruce Hudson, president of Airsoft League South Africa, based in Johannesburg. His organization was recently awarded the right to bring the 2025 Airsoft Nations Cup to Mzanzi. Let's get some more details from the man. Yo, Bruce, what's up, bro? Thanks for agreeing to giving 20 Gaming this exciting scoop. How do you feel about winning the 2025 Airsoft Nations Cup for South Africa? Hey, Max, thanks for having me. Look, for real, it's, it's still something that hasn't quite hit home just yet. Uh, it's still a bit of a surreal moment. However, it is exciting. It's different. I mean, we plan to go there and win uh, the Nations Cup or place top five in the World Cup at least. Didn't quite do that. But we came back with the opportunity that was way bigger than winning any gold medal. And that was to grow the sport in a, in a light that doesn't get the opportunity to be grown often. So to compete on a world stage and come back and instead of bringing the trophy, we brought back the world stage. I think that's the, that's the biggest thing, the, the most exciting part of what, what there is for this. So yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's definitely something that we didn't expect, but completely honored. And we just want to make it work the right way. That's, that's just how it is and get the sport out there so people can be exposed to, to this level of competition and the camaraderie and the community that, that has evolved around this sport. I won't lie to you, bro. I didn't even know what Airsoft was until one of your partners, RGB Gaming, brought it to my attention. And I'm sure a lot of South Africans might also have no flipping clue what it is. So how would you explain the sports to listeners who are only hearing about it now for the first time? <laughs> yeah, well, look, honestly, you're not the only one. For those that don't know what Airsoft is, RGB Gaming has been working with them to make this link between the two industries, like the reality to the simulation. So Airsoft is a derivative of that gaming. It's been pulled, it's eSports e in reality. It's uh, Call of Duty in real life. It's CSGO in real life. Basically, you're a first-person shooter game in the reality taken out of that simulation where a lot of people are playing these military simulation games and these objectives and so on, and that's on the social aspect. So when you go to a weekend game, you playing this game as as if you were in Call of Duty yourself and you're running around and you're shooting these six millimeter plastic BBs that when they hit you it feels like a little elastic band that's been uh, slapped up against your wrist for example. It's got a very similar concept to paintball specifically on the competitive scene. Um, there's a lot of similarities between paintball but to give you an idea Airsoft is on a social aspect, it's gaming in real life where you call your hits, it's an honor game, it's it's all about being honorable, especially on the social scene, you just call your hit when you've been hit and you move to your respawn, uh, you respawn back into the game and you move forward and you, you progress through objectives and work as a team and just try and achieve whatever the objective is for that particular game. On the competitive side of things, that's when things get a little bit different, that's very similar to the speedball, uh, paintball side of things uh, where you've got these guys in a smaller field setting which is 36 meters by 18 meters in, in size got five people playing against another five or three versus three and even as a 1v1s where you compete in a very fast paced very intense role and style of play you basically have all these bright colors on in uniforms your guns are bright colors your bb's glow in the dark you've got a marshal on the field or referee should i say on the field for every single player that's on the field so they keep an eye on who's getting shot and who's not it's a very intense scene and it's absolutely adrenaline and filled and packed full of energy and excitement it's it's really just something that most people should just experience at least once in their lifetime so let's get a little bit of background on your organization airsoft league south africa how long has it been running and are there any notable achievements that it's accomplished since it was established Wow, okay. Well, Airsoft League South Africa is almost four years old. My wife and I were still in bed on a Sunday morning and my uh, son at the, the time, he was seven, he walked into the room and he was like, Dad, I want to play Airsoft. Being Sunday morning after a long week of work, you're like, yes, boy, okay, we'll we'll talk about it just now because, um, I mean, it's 7 o'clock in the morning. You kind of just want to sleep a little bit on a Sunday. But, yeah, originally it started with him wanting to play. I Googled it, went into YouTube. I watched a video of Airsoft 
and I said to my wife, yes, my son needs to play airsoft. That's where it started. And in the short time that the company has been around with our first game we ever hosted, uh, was at the uh, old Kempton Park Hospital, uh, which was supposedly a haunted place and, and all this, and it had so much hype behind it. It was the first game we were hosting, and uh, Airsoft League at that point, on the first game, became the largest Airsoft organization in South Africa, and we hosted 338 players in at our first game. We then went on from being the largest Airsoft organization in the country to breaking an official world record for the largest indoor game ever to be hosted over 24 hours, again inside Kempton Park Hospital. We then progressed to the largest game ever hosted in, in, in South Africa, again to 1,208 players at our first, uh, the first event of an annual event series that we created called Airsoft X. Players come from all over the world by the likes of Kiki Mustang, uh, Names Nico, uh, GG Astro, One, uh, GG One Punch, uh, Airsoft, these guys came from all over the world uh, and they are influencers in their own right and uh, on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and everywhere and they are just massive in the airsoft scene and to bring them into South Africa was the first time it had ever been done. I suppose that's also an achievement I brought the internationals to the local scene. From that game we progressed to Airsoft X the following year which set us on 1,318 players that awarded us with the record for the largest airsoft organization in the southern hemisphere uh, we are now eighth uh, we were six at the time we're now eighth there's been an event that's kind of knocked us down a couple of pegs we we now the eighth largest event in the world with a thousand four hundred and eight players we we now have the the first south african team that has ever competed at the world cup now we have our biggest achievement of all bringing the world stage to south, Af uh, south african soil and what about the rest of the world? How big is Airsoft? And can you give us some numbers so people can get a scale of its popularity worldwide? And where exactly is it popular in the world? Oh, oh, wow. Well, it, well obviously it originated from Japan. Uh, that's where airsoft was created it's a, a japanese created sport and it's just progressed from there i do believe america now has the biggest uh, setting and if not it's definitely europe that i think it's very close i mean the largest game in the world uh, hosted by airsoft halden called dark emergency uh, they host 4,000 players capped at 4,000 players every year at that event. I've attended that event myself and I've got a very good relationship with the owner of Airsoft Halden. We talk and we actually currently can to collaborate for 2025's Airsoft X and Dark Emergency events by collaborating together to make both his event, the world's largest event, and my event in South Africa, like the, the biggest collaboration of organizations ever to be experienced. The airsoft scene is massive in, in Europe and, and in, in America, and Asia being the, the largest manufacturers and, and contributors to the commercial scene and industry. We've also got uh, Novridge, which is the largest brand in the industry in the world, and also one of the sponsors to the South African Speedsoft team that competed at the World Cup. They all also airsoft league organization sponsors as well so the scene is massive it's just south africa is about seven years behind where the european industry is and the, the american industry is i mean when it comes to molsim style events they are miles ahead of us when it comes to competitive airsoft beatsoft uh, we've already discovered that, that we are years behind and we're not far off. It's, it's, it's a massive industry and the international scene being the largest is one of the biggest reasons why having South Africa the hosts of the 2025 World Cup is a massive feature because we bring those people to South Africa. I've contributed to bringing internationals through every single year from an influencer basis to South Africa to introduce South Africans airsoft to the international national scene. We've managed to achieve things where you see South African airsoft shirts being worn internationally and people messaging uh, us from America and from uh, Europe and Australia and China and we've even had people from Lithuania they literally message us and say please we'd love to come and play um, at your event how do we get involved and how do we get there or do you allow international so we we now we've been invited to play in poland and america uh, we've been invited on a social basis uh, to play in mexico 
there's so many countries that are miles and miles ahead of us the more you go down the youtube rabbit hole of airsoft the more you'll see how big the scene is overseas okay bruce just to clarify is this official news that the airsoft nations cup is coming to sa or is there still some paperwork that still needs to be done first well, it's official. It's 100% official. There's no more paperwork required. What the challenges we have is not the permission or the confirmation of hosting it, but more the ability to host it. And yes, it, we, we found our challenges going through to the World Cup, trying to win the World Cup, but uh, we've got a different set of challenges now with us being able to host the World Cup. So we have been awarded and confirmed the hosts of the 2025 World Cup. Now the question is where we've got the we know when it's going to be hosted so it'll be around about this time next year it's going to be a long 12 months of hard work and a lot of manual labor and uh, yeah hopefully we can set it off in the in the right light and by the end of October this year and beginning of November this year there will be the official announcement but that is provided that the field that we need to host this event on is to standard and up to scratch so that we we able to host it on a as a world stage event okay so let's talk about government support would backing from our new minister of sports mr gaten mckenzie seal the deal for next year's airsoft nations cup to be hosted in mzanzi oh yes 100 percent. mr gaten mckenzie's been doing some insane things since he's come into power in the sports and uh, arts and culture uh, department the things that he's been doing and i've been following him he went to the olympics and he's come back and he's like helping the the players that meddled at the Olympics, getting them exposed, as well as now the UFC. Obviously, that's a big thing, and busy with the Formula One, bringing Formula One back to South Africa. I believe he is the right person to get involved. Mr. Gator McKenzie is definitely one that can make this an extreme possibility, even to the point where we could most likely, with the government support, host the most Premiership World Cup in the world for our sport. Hosting the most Premiership World Cup would basically lead to us being the hosts of this very World Cup either annually or every second year. Those are the talks that we've already had with the head of the organizations. Them explaining to us that if we can get this going and do it the right way and make it a possibility, South Africa is a good base to host these events because of the fact that it is cheap for internationals to fly, which means it contributes to more nations, more countries showing up in South Africa. But at the same same time this is something that we really need Gates and McKenzie to get involved in and the government to get involved in because this doesn't just contribute to airsoft growing in South Africa this is tourism this is sports and making airsoft an official sport in South Africa is a huge feature to us as an industry and as a country because we would be the first country in the world to officialize airsoft as an actual sport in South Africa that is recognized worldwide that would then lead to countries from all over the world coming to South Africa, competing on an annually or biannually basis, uh, if we've got the government funding behind us, we will 100% have the best venue in the world and create the ultimate world stage. Okay, so have you ever tried approaching the Department of Sports or private companies for sponsorships and investments, or do you already have sponsors right now? Oh wow, yeah, we have definitely tried. It's been tasking to try and get to the right people and getting passed from pillar to post and so on. So from a government level, we've managed to make it all the way to parliament in trying to get government support. We've spoken to many different departments, but never quite the right person to speak to. So we're still on that task and we're still trying really, really hard to get to that side of things. From a private perspective and the corporates, we've approached pretty much every corporate you could possibly think of all your mainstream corporates at this point they're only sponsoring big guys the big sports we're not quite on their radar we do also have sponsors already but that is particularly for the South African team and uh, Novridge which I have mentioned before is our sponsor for the South African team and the only sponsor for the organization as a whole they've sponsored us for an entire year we've got other sponsors like Silo Entertainment which is the largest influencer in the world and Silo Events is they also an events organization company so the both of them they're in Novridge as well it's a European based company they're not local we've also got sponsors from the UK which is High Kappa Hub got Monk Customs which is also 
also a sponsor and they're from America. We have Vinitas, which is a sponsor from Spain. Clarity Benefit, who sponsored us all of our travel insurance. They are a local company. They assisted us with making sure that all our travel insurance was great. Uh, Aeronautical Aviation, who sponsored us uh, in South Africa. Die Paintball, uh, which is a local, as well as international company that have sponsored us as well for the South African team. There's been some great uh, support and we really do appreciate all our sponsors. Uh, really, really, you, nobody can understand how much their help put us over the finish line to get us to Netherlands to compete. Okay, so once the deal is sealed, which location would the events take place and what kind of action would people expect should they choose to attend as spectators? So to make it as central as possible, accessible as possible, so that we can cater for players from all around Gauteng and Joburg and the east, the west, the north, Pretoria and the south of Joburg and far south. We, we're trying to get everything arranged for the Randburg, four ways, that kind of area because it's quite north and it's like quite central. It's out of town, it's easy access from the highways, it's easy access from the airport, it's not far for Pretoria players, it's not far for the Boxburg players, the far west players like Krugersdorp and so on as well as the, the south of Johannesburg players. So we're trying to keep that as central as possible with the, the hopes of getting the support that we need so that we can do the same thing in KZN, Cape Town and, and surrounding provinces because there is a huge amount of interest coming from those different uh, regions within the country asking us, how do we get involved? I'd like to go one step further and, and make sure that there's venues throughout the country, at least three, so that we can host all the regions and at the end of the year when it comes to selections and the end of the season get ready for World Cup. We've got players from the entire country rather than mainly Johannesburg regions. As for the spectator scene, wow. We didn't realize from the spectator uh, side of things what it was or what it was like to be a spectator but we experienced it from a player's perspective. Honestly the craziest thing is after the, the World Cup when we got back we realized real fast what it was like to be part of that even actually even while we were still there um, we got to realize what it was like to be part of that spectator scene so what you can expect is at the time of the game on the field spectators they're there at the live event it's a crazy noise there might not be 5,000 or 10,000 people in the crowds but I can tell you the noise is the same the Mexican waves that were going on when you're standing on the the, the spectators deck you've got this line of people um, the full width of the, the field screaming their country flag or team names and banging on the boards clapping and cheering we, we were in the stands when the UK and the US were playing because we were supporting them and it's, it's absolutely crazy the, the community the level of of shared community is absolutely insane and that camaraderie is just life-changing for most at the best and it's a wrap ninjas on the phone with me was Bruce Hudson from Johannesburg president of Airsoft League South Africa we were discussing our country's successful bid to host the 2025 Airsoft Nations Cup why his organization needs the support of the sports ministry as well as Mzanzi's role in the international airsoft scene. Be sure to follow, like and subscribe to 20 Gaming's social media. We still have a lot more airsoft content to share. Once again, Bruce, thanks for agreeing to the interview. It was an honor to have you on 20 Gaming. Thanks a lot, Max. I appreciate you having me. Thanks for supporting us and, and wanting to cover our story and I hope this reaches the right ears. Thank you for the amazing work you do and uh, yeah, let's see what comes of it. Thanks for having us.